video, we try to get an intuitive sense of how to factor a quadratic when this first coefficient is bigger than 1. And I'm going to continue to talk about my, my understanding of these quadratics, but I'm really going to just work through these. And I think through just plowing through them, you'll kind of see and get a sense of how this stuff works. So I want to factor this. What do I do? Well, I'm going to factor in pairs. That's typical strategy here. So I set those brackets up. And I have 3b squared. So I know at some point I'm going to need 3b and multiply it by b. And then I'm almost done. Now my c term is 2, right? But um, eventually when we factor this out, in order to make it work, we know we're going to multiply 3b by one of the factors of 2. Thus really making it the two factors of 2, one of which is tripled, we're really looking at factors of a times c, or 6, because 3 times 2 is 6. So what factors of 6 add up to negative 5? Right, let's look at that. So the factors of 6 that add up to negative 5. Well, um, what is negative 2 times negative 3? And I'm looking again at negative factors because I know we need to add them to get a negative b term here. Well, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And what's negative 2 plus negative 3? Well, that's negative 5. So I found it. Two terms that multiply to positive 6 and add to negative 5. But I can't just put negative 2 and negative 3 here. Uh, they're both going to be negative, though, so I can put the negative signs in there as I'm thinking. What do I do next? Well, we tripled, right? We tripled the product because we looked at a times c. And we really need to find two factors that multiply to 2. So how, if we triple both of them, how do we work backwards? Well, we could pick either of these two and divide them by 3. I'm going to pick negative 3 because it divides nicely. I could use negative 2, and I might show that. Uh, I get the same answer, but that would, that would give me a fraction. I don't want to deal with that. So what's negative 3 divided by 3? Well, that equals negative 1. And now I have my two factors. Negative 2 times negative 1 will give me a positive 2. So I just plug them in. There's negative signs already in there, so I put my 2 here and my 1 here, and that's important. I couldn't put the 1 in this location because I need the 3 here to multiply out and re-triple this factor so it adds up to 5. Remember, we divided this by 3, and that's staying balanced because eventually we're going to multiply it by 3 over here. If I put the 1 in this spot where the 2 is, um, it wouldn't work. I would be tripling the 2 and not the 1. And we could try that out to see if it works. But anyway, so 3b, let's check it, times b. That gives me 3b squared. Now, 3b times minus 1 gives me minus 3b. And then, negative 2 times b gives me negative 2b. And then negative 2 times negative 1 gives me positive 2. Simplify this out. This gives me negative 5b plus 2 and 3b squared. That's our original quadratic. Now, you know, if you're feeling unsure about this with all these steps and it feels overwhelming, that's okay. Try alternate forms and always check to see if it works. Let's pretend we switched it around to 3b minus 1 and then b minus 2, right? Let's see if this works. What's 3b times b? What's 3b squared? What's 3b times negative 2? What's negative 6b? What's negative 1 times b? That's negative b, and negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. But now when I simplify, right, negative 6b and negative b add up to negative 7b. So I have 3b squared minus 7b plus 2. And this is not the original quadratic. Oh no. So what does that mean? If you came up with this quadratic first, and you checked it and realized it doesn't work, don't panic, right? All that means is you've got to switch these two factors so it looks like this, and then it will work. Let's try another one. We'll just keep going. Um, okay, so next let's try uh, a different coefficient of a. Let's try 5x squared minus x plus 18. Well, you know what? Let's switch it up a little bit. Minus 18. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're factoring in pairs, and an easy way to approach this is to put a 5x here and an x there. 
Later on, that'll multiply back to 5x squared. And now, I'm tempted to look, of course, because you see 18 here. That's the c term. c equals, let's say, negative 18. And you want to say, okay, well, what factors of negative 18 add up to the b term? Now, the b term here is negative 1. Right, because negative 1 times x is negative x. And uh, that's what you're wanting to look for. But remember, the a term is greater than 1. In this case, a is equal to 5. So we need to look at um, factors of a c, or a times c, that add up to negative 1. So what is a c? Well, that's 5 times negative 18. And what's that? Well, 5 times negative 18, I think of 5 times negative 10, negative 50, plus, right, 5 times negative 8, negative 40, negative 50, negative 40, that's negative 90. Okay, so what factors of negative 90 add up to negative 1? That seems really nasty. But again, we're looking at factors that multiply to a negative. So we need one positive factor and one negative factor. And we know that the when we add them up, it has to equal negative 1. So we're looking at factor pairs where the larger absolute value is the negative factor. So it adds to a negative result. So in this case, it's going to be negative 10 times 9. And that gives me negative 90, right? But also, if I add negative 10 and 9, I get negative 1. And there, if you look at it, you can see, oh, negative 10 is the larger factor, right? It has the larger absolute value. So I know when I'm going to add that to the 9, I should get a negative result. That was kind of my guidance there in finding these, these factor pairs. But I'm not done yet, because um, this is AC. Now, when we distribute this out, we eventually have to get back to 18. So how do we do that? Well, since AC is 5 times larger than C, we pick one of these terms and divide by 5. I'm going to pick negative 10. Negative 10 divided by 5, right? If, you know, if you think about factors, these are factor pairs. If negative 10 times 9 is negative 90, divide negative 10 by 5. That gives you negative 2. And negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. So it gives you the C term. You're just dividing back what you multiplied by. And all this tells me is that my two factor terms I'm going to use are the 9 and the negative 2. And I'm going to plug those into the formula up here. Where do I put them? Well, the 9 is going to go over here. But the negative 2 is going to go here. How did I know that? Well, let me just rewrite this, negative 2. The 5x is over here, right? And we're going to distribute it in a moment to these both parts of this term. So 5x is going to be multiplied by negative 2, and that will give us negative 10, which is what we want. Because negative 10 is to be added to 9 and get negative 1. If you switch the 9 and the negative 2 around, you'll realize that it doesn't, in fact, check out. And that's that's the important part with this, to check it out. So what's what about 9? We add... We add 9, right? Because it's positive 9. And now, in case we're, you know, if we're feeling a little shaky out of this, we check. What's 5x times x? That's 5x squared. What's 5x times negative 2? Well, that's just negative 10x. What's 9 times x? What's well, 9x's or 9x? And what's positive 9 times negative 2? It's negative 18. If we simplify this, negative 10x and 9x, that adds up to negative x. We still have our 5x squared, and we still have our minus 18, and that is our original quadratic. So we did factor it correctly. And checking really is the key in these problems. Let's try one more. All right, let's look at one more example. We have 7x squared minus 11x minus 6. So now, as the a term gets a lot larger, these factor pairs can quickly become very difficult to analyze. It's great at that moment to have a calculator, or to just keep trying examples until you find what you need. In this case, though, I think we, I can handle this mentally in a quick way. Because we have 7x and x. That breaks up 7x squared. We also know that our c term is negative 6. And our b term is negative 11. And our a term is equal to 7. So we want to look at uh, factors of a times c. And you can see because a is now so large, Multiplying it by c gives you a rather large number, right? Negative 42. And now what we have to do is look at factors of negative 42 that add up to 11. So you can imagine if the c term was something a lot larger, 
that this could become very big and very fast. Um, and that's something to think about as the A term gets very large, uh, you, you might want to have a calculator on hand. So what do we do now? Well, uh, what factors of A, what are factors of AC that add up to a negative number? Well, AC itself is a negative product. And in order to multiply two numbers and get a negative product, one has to be positive and the other has to be negative. In this case, the negative has to be larger. Why? Because when we add the negative and positive, we get a negative result. So the negative has to have a larger absolute value. So bigger absolute value. And that's a key observation to help steer you on the next steps. So what do we look at? Well, negative 42, if we think about it, can be broken up into a positive and negative factor such that um, we have 21, let's say. Well, let's say 2 times negative 21. Now, 2 times negative 21, that gives you negative 42. But if we add up these two terms, we get negative 19. That's not what we need. But I think we're getting on the right track. right? We can play around with these now. 2 times negative 3 times negative 7 times 3. I broke up negative 21, and this is how I would deal with these larger, larger products. 3, I'm going to move it over here. So 3 times 2, right, times negative 7. But since we only have two factors, let's combine the 3 and the 2 to get 6 multiplied by negative 7. So this gives me negative 42, and if I add these two up, I get negative 1. So I'm, I mean, I'm getting closer. I need to find two that add up to negative 11. So how do I do that? Well, what haven't we tried yet? Well, let's, let's try combining the 2 and the negative 7 first. So then we get 3 times, well, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. So now I know that 3 times negative 14 has to be negative 42. So all I did was move these different factors around, right? I moved them around to get something that I want to. And here, 3 times negative 14, that has to be negative 42. If I add it up, I get negative 11. So I know I'm done. And this, this, this process, finding one factor pair, and then manipulating them by breaking them down to their factors, and then rearranging their prime factors, can be very helpful for these kinds of problems. And in fact, might help you avoid using a calculator, and just trying endless examples. Shift these around until you see what you want. So here, I know I need to use 3 and negative 14, but remember, I can't just plug those in. Right? This product is too large. My product has to be negative 6 in the end when I factor this out. So one of these has to be divided by 7 because ultimately this product is 7 times too big, right? We've multiplied by 7. So which one am I going to divide by 7? I'm going to choose the one that's easier. Negative 14 divided by 7 is easier to think about than 3 divided by 7. That gives me negative 2. So my two factor pairs are negative 2 and 3. 3 goes here. Well, because eventually when I redistribute the 7x, I don't want it to make the 3 larger. The 3 is remaining the same. I want to put the negative 2 over here because the 7x should multiply by the negative 2 and make that negative 14. Remember, we need that factor to add it up and make negative 11. 3 itself will remain positive. So now I have everything I need and I have the answer, but let me clear, clear this off so we can check. Okay, so what do we do? Well, 7x times x is 7x squared. So far, so good. 7x times negative 2 is negative 14x. There's that negative 14. We need that. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So we simplify. Negative 14x and 3x. It's negative 11x. Minus 6 is still there and 7x squared, we got back to our original quadratic. All right, so I hope this helped.